Hey everybody, welcome back to Everything Money. We're glad you joined us again. Today we're looking at a specific sector, which is retail. We're gonna be looking at Sleep Number, Abercrombie & Fitch, Dick's Sporting Goods. I love Home, Dick's. Home Depot and Dollar Tree, all of which I assume Paul would have a much lower profit margin. But we're quickly gonna look through our eight pillar analysis on these companies, Look at, use our stock analyzer tool, all of which you can have is by joining our Patreon. And we'll talk to the, the handsome and beautiful Mo, our Egyptian dreamboat, yeah. But whether if the Bidness Nation, and we will is be selling a dreamboat tour of the Nile. Go on with uh, Mo soon in a gondola, in, but we will not guarantee sexual favors from Mo. Can you belly dance like in a? <laughs> are you a close? <laughs> Susie's gonna love that. <laughs> Paul, right. what are your thoughts on retail in general? Do you stay with? So the thing with retail is right now. Physical retail locations are going through a consolidation process. I don't think they're going away, but I think there'll be a very big move towards online, which I think we saw a lot. Like Dick's Sporting Goods has done a phenomenal job with online sales. Yep. But for all of these companies, when we do the stock analyzer tool, I think you need to be very conservative in your assumptions because there will be definite consolidation in retail as time goes on, as Amazon becomes bigger. Amazon already occupies like 52% of all online sales. Online sales are making up 18 or 20% of all retail sales, so it's growing, and you have to be aware of that. Don't be naive about that. Now, we're gonna skip right to the eight pillars tab and all these stocks, and the reason being, we don't have the time to go through every single one individually. Sleep number. The only X's we have are profit margin, which is barely below, and they do have a negative to assets and liabilities, which I don't think is a big deal in retail, because a lot of these retail companies use credit to buy these. So make sure you're looking at this relative to the industry. Sleep number is a little, a little book that beats the market magic formula stock. Well, it's because it's only a 12 PE I just and it has this. a 24% return on assets. Ah, okay. But it's a $2.4 billion company and it has pretty good net income and good free cash flow. So this is something to look at with, with the sleep number. Great beds. Abercrombie and Fitch. The only X, profit margin. Okay. Other than that, it's all checks. It's, I don't know how the brand is. I don't have 15 year old kids, are they still buying Abercrombie? When I was, when we were in high school, Abercrombie was like the spot, right? Yeah, yeah the end all. Do, do your kids buy it? Yes, actually okay. they love it. Oh, there you um, go. great. Yeah, and in fact, even my kids love the moose logo. They love anything moose. And What's so, the moose? Is that what the moose is? That what yeah, it is? yeah, I just thought little, it was an error. Yeah, like, like, like <laughs> yeah, no, it's the moose. Keep going. Okay, so they've got a lot of good pluses here, but again, you gotta be conserved. They're, they're buying back shares. I love all this stuff. The price of free cash flow. I don't know. I mean, it is based on, a much lower number than last year, but last year's number could be because of working capital changes inventory. The bottom line is, again, be conservative on retail. Next company, Dick's Sporting Goods, okay? Again, the only X is profit margin at 9.3%. Other than that, I've liked Dick's for a while. <laughs> oh boy. How can you not say that and just not laugh? I, I listen when they make the, the who who's naming these companies? What imbecile? I, I still remember when I was in high school and I was at my friend, our friend Dave, uh, uh, Dave, one of our kids in the class, and we were at his house and his mom was like, she was like, "Where are you guys going? We're going to Dicks." Oh, I love Dicks, and we were just like, "Okay." So um, the free cash flow has jumped up a lot in the last year. I would take that in consideration. They pay a decent dividend. Um, so overall, I think Dix is a great brand in terms of, I love going to Dix to, to buy anything I need for, yeah. for sporting goods. Um, Home Depot. Okay. Now Home Depot skyrocketed lately because last year they had the big year when everybody was going to do home projects while they were at home, saving money. Uh, so their PE is high. The price of free cash flow is high, but everything else is a check. This is a very common theme amongst companies. Um, boy, look at that free cash flow jumped up big time. Big dividends being paid. Um, nice profit margin, nice gross margin, very healthy return on assets and return on invested capital. So Home Depot is very big. I don't know if we can justify this big number, but we'll look at it in the stack analyzer tool. And our final company, Dollar Tree. Yep. Now, the great thing about Dollar Tree, guys, is when the economy slows down, companies like Dollar Tree tend to do better. Mm -hmm. So it might, be a, it might be a good hedge for if you think a recession's coming or something like that. I don't believe in timing things that way, but if you wanna kind of hedge for that, might not be a bad idea. Profit margin is low and the price of free cash flow is high. I don't know why that might be because their pre-cash flow is it's pretty consistent. They don't pay a dividend. Return on invested capital and return on assets, not very great. So nothing here makes me go because I'm always apprehensive about retail. We're going to factor all that in in our stock analyzer tool so we can pick a value. All these companies, 
I would be surprised if they're out of business in the next five or 10 years. I think these companies are all gonna be around for a long period of time. So I'm gonna do a seven year analysis in all of these. Much like McDonald's, I feel like Dollar Tree and Dollar Genuine, I mean, whenever I'm driving in the middle of nowhere and come to a small town, there's always one of these, they're just throwing up. It's like clockwork, the McDonald's and Dollar General, Dollar Tree is gonna be in one of these towns. Mo, are people trading these in the bid and ask nation? What so, are all these arrows you got going for on For the there? sake of time, let's just look at the long-term chart. now. Sleep number, this is something that, I mean, there's a little gap right there that needs to fill. So let this thing move into the sweet spot, start making some green engulfing candlesticks. And I think that, I think you can actually get something out of this one. This is a good looking one. Let's look at Abercrombie next, A and F. What do we got here? So this is the first time I'm looking at these. So you can tell that, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time and I could just look at a pattern and recognize mm -hmm. it. So right now I'm just seeing, there's just a lot of consolidation right in here. So. To me, I'm just gonna be patient. Again, let this thing turn up. It's, I'm sure that all retail is gonna be close to the bottom here, maybe with the exception of Home Depot. But let this thing get up here, start making engulfing candlesticks. I think you could probably get a run to maybe over $45, something what a, like that. What about the engulfing candle dick sporting goods? The engulfing candle dick <laughs> sporting goods. You like Let's how see. I did that? DKS, I did. That's why I'm the host, Mo. Was that a slip of the tongue? That was look very planned. That's why I look cut at, you off. Go look ahead. at them. Okay, so I lied. I'm going to pull over here. Yeah, so let's look at this because this is kind of power stock looking. It's um, overall four of its major moving averages. It keeps making all-time highs. Today it touched another all-time high. They just did such a great job during the pandemic. Um, so right now you can see they're just going sideways over here, going sideways. So if they keep making engulfing candlesticks like this, keep engulfing candle dicks, just keep going. Are we not in the overbought region here? We are, but it's, remember, it's a power stock. So the idea is we want to come through the sweet spot somewhere and then get overbought and just go sideways while the stock price just keeps climbing on you. So that is a very ideal power stock. Remember, sweet spot, then stay in the overbought area. How about Home Depot, which I love way more than Lowe's? Home Depot is actually on my watch list right now. Let's see what they're doing. They're incredible. Um, okay, so... They were another one, came up great, and then they just kind of leveled off, and then they went down, actually. Okay, so right now, you can see, look at that dramatic uh -oh. drop. So right now, with Home Depot, this might be something that you want to put on a watch list to go short. It's, it, uh, they did very well during their lockdown. Now, if we get any kind of turn in the economy and the stock market, people are going to not be renovating their house as much. So this is something to keep an eye on. You're going to have a strong support level here at $300 and 304 but it's just something to keep a watch on. And you can look at it at the top side too. They could definitely keep going sideways, making engulfing candlesticks, breaking out over this all-time high, and keep running with it. How about Dollar Tree? Dollar Tree, D-L-T-R. Let's see here. Oof, they've been beaten down, but the good news is they have that little gap to fill right there. So they're going sideways on the bottom as the price just slowly decreases. Eventually, I think this will turn up. It already kind of is. Let it move into the sweet spot. Be one of the first ones into it. Catch that gap up. And if you get lucky, man, you can run this thing up to $120, $115 a share. So all of these stocks definitely have potential. And retail, as you can see, the whole sector kind of looks the same with the exception of Home Depot, like I was thinking. If this resonates with you, you can join the Patreon below. Click the link and you can join our community. You can trade with Mo on a daily basis. And Mo, that bid and ask was like a idea we had just this year. Yeah. And next thing you know, is it 700 people? 700, 800 it? people. I don't know what it is now, but you can see. I mean, I just looked at these. I've never looked at sleep number in my life. And I just looked at it for the first time. And never, I never looked at Dollar Tree in my life. It's, you, you'll get so used to this. It just becomes simple pattern recognition. And you'll be able to do this like the back of your hand. Paul, uh, including uh, in our software, you get the stock analyzer tool, which you're going to show us right now. This can let us know what we want to pay for these companies. Yeah. And if you like the software, we created the software because users kept asking us for it. It's 84 cents a day. It gives you so much. It gives you the stock analyzer tool. It gives you the mobile app, the eight pillars, all the stuff, um, real estate calculator, access to us, exclusive daily content, and the Discord community with over 5,000 people you can discuss all of your investment ideas with, 84 cents per day. Less than a cup of coffee at Speedway gas station or McDonald's. I mean, this is literally crazy. So anyways, um, it's growing like crazy. Come join the fan club. Now guys, when it comes to retail, I want you to do two things. One. You need to look at same store comparable sales. It's easy to grow revenue when you're just opening more locations. Mm -hmm. What you want to make sure is the same store comparable sales, which the stores have been open 12 to 18 months, are growing as well. Because if they're not growing, it's basically showing that the company is not gaining ground. It's just growing through paying for growth. I don't like that. Same with acquisitions. I want to make sure they're growing naturally on their own. 
That's the first thing. Second thing, like I said earlier, be very conservative with your assumptions on revenue growth because of two reasons. One, growth from opening more stores is in these revenue growth numbers, which you shouldn't factor, and it's retail. It's gonna be hurt over time. Now, I don't think, like for example, Home Depot, you'll see, I put higher multiples on PE and free cash flow because I don't. Th I think it's gonna be harder for Home Depot to be taken over by online sales from other, like Amazon or something like that. People go to Home Depot when they want anything home related. Like I remember recently, and I buy everything from Amazon and I needed to get like shears for, and I remember going like, oh, let me check Amazon. I'm like, why am I going to Amazon? I'm like, I'm just gonna get in the car and go to Home Depot. That's literally what I did. So anyhow, we're gonna run through these. Here are the assumptions I made. Pause the screen, look at the assumptions based on revenue growth. This is for sleep number. I hit the analyze button. So right now, sleep number might not be a bad idea because it's selling for below the mid-level. Look at my numbers, look at the, assu the assumptions I'm making, might be reasonable. So I'm looking at this going, okay, let's maybe add this to our list of options to look at, Mo. Sleep number. Sleep number. So I'm looking at it going, do more research, decide if you really believe what's going on here, the story. To me, buying a mattress, it's pretty important to go test it out first, and right? And these mattresses are phenomenal. Are they? And they have 99 or 100 day return policy, no questions asked. No questions asked. Yeah. So if I go on my mattress and I just start <laughs> urinating on it. Paul, I knew no you were going to go asked. there with that. <laughs> well, of course I'm going to go there with that. No questions you still asked. Wet no the, questions asked. You still wet the bed? Well, on purpose sometimes. Okay, go on. Okay. Donald Trump. So um, the next company, Abercrombie & Fitch. Guys, I went and put, I, my hike number was 0% revenue growth. I am being conservative with Abercrombie & Fitch. Make all these assumptions, pause the screen if you want to check it out. Abercrombie just seems expensive to me. The highest assumption, it's a, it's a reasonable deal. I want to buy Abercrombie a lot lower, somewhere in the, in the low 20s. That's just where I stand. My assumptions could be wrong. You could disagree with my assumptions. That's perfectly fine. I'm trying to be as conservative as possible without being unrealistic. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Next company, Dix. Same thing here, guys. I, I don't think they're opening more locations, but make sure they're not. Hit the analyze button. Okay, it might be selling for maybe where it's at. Well, let's add Dix to our, uh, our options chain. Because look, the price is 107 right now, and our low price on the mid-level is 105. I tend to do a 12.5% return for my mid-level. So if I can find it where I can buy it for below there, I'm pretty pleased where I can go, okay, maybe I can make some money here. So um, Home Depot. Yep, Home Depot. Again. I bet this is overpriced. It is. Yeah. Massively overpriced. 340, I want to buy it in the high ones, mid ones. It's high. And you know what, guys? It's such a big company to sell for 25 or whatever number of time earnings. It just seems a little ridiculous to me. Now, in the retail world, it's probably one of the better ones, but still... I don't want to overpay for that. The margin's not huge. I did put higher multiples on everything for Home Depot, but I'm probably going to pass on Home Depot for right now. And the final one is Dollar Tree. Mm -hmm. Here are my assumptions. Take a to pause it. Take a look at them. PE analyze button. Yeah, overpriced a little bit. But again, this company could do very, very well and have much higher revenue growth if we hit a recession or some slowdown in the economy. So maybe it's not too overpriced. I have no idea. But I'm looking at you know, around 60 to $70 a share from the middle range. So anyways, guys, the point is, retail is gonna be beaten up. So I think there's gonna be a lot of, there's a lot of negative news about retail. This is where you can find a lot of value opportunity. Realize where the real story is. Like, is, is this retail business really going under? Everybody thinks that retail is going away, it's gonna be gone forever. It's not, it's just gonna change. Just like everything changes. You know, there's still train companies out there and there's still train tracks, even though the world went from trains to automobiles and airplanes, right? Isn't there a good movie about that? <laughs> Fantastic movie. Um, so either way, with, with, with retail, I think there's a lot of value opportunity in retail, but you gotta be very specific. Make sure it's companies with strong free cash flow, very, a lot less debt, and uh, move on with that with caution, but I think you can make some good money. If this style resonates with you, you can join our Patreon below, have access to the software, and talk to people all over the world about evaluating companies in this manner. Again, not hyping companies, not hoping on analyst projections for the future, but actually looking at numbers. That is our style and can be yours momentarily if you want the software and join our Patreon. That is our take. Fondle the thumbs up. Patrons, you know I love you the most. We'll see you next video.